Got a fantastic show in store for you. I got a living legend and I got a local pro right here that's going to be talking bass fishing tonight. A lot of good stories, a lot of good information is going to be shared with you guys. I want to introduce my guest for tonight. I put it on the, the uh, Fish North Georgia group page as a local living legend. And I have been trying, I've been talking to people for about two years now. And I told him this, that I've been trying to get this man, Paul Driscoll, to come on the show. And I reached out to him last week and show, show that pretty pretty mug right there. Look at that, man. He's smiling. He's been up here for about an hour. I think I've got him broke in. So hopefully I've got him relaxed enough. But Mr. Driscoll's in the house, and we're going to talk about how Lanier has changed and, you know, over the 30-plus years he's been fishing in at some of his tournaments, uh, you know, across his life, some of the things that he's done, and how to catch bass right now on Lake Lanier. And to my right, I got MPFL Pro Rob Robleski. How's it going, guys? Hey, you know, I finally got to where I can say your name right. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, I'm getting close. Right well so I'm on, how do I, how, how's it officially? Robleski? Robleski. Robleski. You got it. I got there it. Robleski. Go. Took so, him two years, but you got two it. Two years. So so he's in the house tonight. You guys see the, the crowd behind us? We got a good crowd up here, and I appreciate it. And anytime you are in the area on a Thursday night, Feel free to come in. You know, I say the best time. The show's great, but the hour before the show and then the time after the show, you're going to, you know, good conversations just like we're going to have in here. You guys are always, always welcome. But I'm telling you right now, I got the man right beside me. So, Mr. Driscoll, how are you doing, bud? Doing great. Doing great. You nervous? Bad. <laughs> so, I promise we're going to take it easy on you. Okay. So, just for somebody, you're well known in the Lake Lanier area. And, uh, you, you know, your reputation precedes you. But just for somebody who doesn't know Paul Driscoll, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been fishing. I didn't have a, a father figure that took me fishing. And uh, when I was, I don't know, 10 and up, my uncle, he would take me. And I just, uh, from that point, I enjoyed it. Right. Uh, then 37, 38 years ago, I started dabbling at lake lanier in the tournament uh just going out there and donate my money and uh got hooked on it but i'm no let's get something straight i i'm no legend oh I, that, yeah i don't know where they come up with that i'm a guy that rode the short bus my whole life i wore a helmet towed a bag of crayons i thought it'd be a good idea to start fishing uh just so I could go around and say I was hung and I wouldn't be lying. Yeah, I got you. But you've been fishing Lake Lanier for a long time. Oh. How long did you tell me before the show started? 30, 30, 30 plus years? 30 plus years, so, 35. Yeah, you've seen the lake change and all. So what's really cool about tonight, and uh, we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it easy on you. So you ain't got you ain't gotta be nervous. I told you it changes once we say it's live and we start talking. But um between Rob who is now going into his second year. You took a year off. You're going into your second year of the NPFL. And between Mr. Driscoll here, um, there, is a, there is a lot of tournament experience at a high level. And, you know, you and I were talking earlier. You've noticed a change in fishing now. You, you know, you called yourself the old guy, a lot of high school kids and a lot of younger guys, and you like hanging around them at tournaments. Yes, I do. Yeah, so, I mean, and you're young. Yeah. Relatively. Well, how old are you? 39. 39. No, actually, I'll be 39 in a few more weeks. That's still young compared to me yeah. and Paul. So, yeah, so you're <laughs> a kid. So, you know, a lot of, lot of knowledge right here. So I'm going to start off uh, with a softball easy question for you, and then we'll get into everything. Just kind of get you warmed up, get your juices flowing and all that. I'm going to Lake Lanier tomorrow. I want to catch 20 pounds like all these guys are catching. What do I do? That's the question I get every week. How are these guys consistently catching 19, 20, 21, 22 pounds? What's the secret? I don't know. There's a secret. Uh, if I want to catch 20 pounds, I'm going to have to make a decision. Am I going to go out and live scope these fish over timber, uh, over 40, 50, 60 foot of water, or am I going to put all my eggs in a basket and I'm going to fish 10 foot or less rock all day? Uh, I'm going to throw a Senko. A fluke stick. Uh, I don't throw a single very rarely. It's usually a fluke stick. And I'm going to use an eighth ounce head and I'm just going to beat the rocks together. I call them, I call them blinkers. I, I turn my live scope down to where it's not showing anything but that 15 foot or less. And I'm going to look for blinkers. If it's blinks, rocks don't blink. 
it's a fish laying up there and he's uh usually up there for one reason that's to eat that's the easiest way i know to catch 20 pounds because timber uh you got your young guys that has got it really figured out i think they can do it i can't on consistent basis blinkers that Blinkers. is a term I have not heard so that's far. A new one. Show. That's a new one. Write that down. That sounds like a T-shirt. Blinkers. A uh, couple comments in there. Um, let's see. Joining from the gym, J.P. Vern's in the gym watching us. <laughs> Good Lord, son. You got nothing better to do than watch us from the gym. We appreciate you. All you guys. Uh, Clint Bartlett. I grew up wearing a helmet on a short bus eating crayons, and I started fishing <laughs> just so I could tell the girls I was hung. <laughs> 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 I love this guy so far. I'm going to have to remember that one because um, I've been lying to my wife for about 30 years right now, so I'll, I'll make sure that. But Ron Swinford has a actually serious question. What is the biggest change Paul has seen in the last 10 years on Lake Lanier? I would say in the last five, it has to be live scope. Uh, all the younger generation, I call young in their 20s, they adapted real well to live scope. Uh, is it a game changer? I believe you could still compete without it if you had enough knowledge, but I, you'd have one arm tied behind your back. That's the biggest change I see. Uh, yeah. Took me a year and a half of little Paul and some of them just wearing you out and thinking, I don't need it. But I also thought that about charts, you know, spot lock, uh, all that stuff we didn't have. We had black and white 2D. So it's just evolved over the years. And uh, if my live scope didn't come on in the morning of a tournament, I would still fish it just because I'm competitive. Right. I would not have a chance to win. So you think it's made that much difference? It does to me. It does to you. And you've seen it over the, over the years. That's correct. You know, now let me ask you this because, you know, there's a huge debate going on. You got your Randy Blockets of the world and all that argument. Do you think on a professional level they should keep live scope or do away with it? Keep any tool. It's like a tool in the toolbox. If it helps you use it, they need to limit the number of transducers on a boat. If they cut the transducers down to a certain amount, now we're getting them, you know, we're getting the live scopes on each corner. It's just uh, my opinion getting out of hand if they want to do it i'll put them on my boat uh whatever it takes to compete yeah i've noticed uh a couple of guys in the electric only world they got live scope up front and up back you know right. on back for the so that's an interesting thing now rob you jumped into pro fishing mm -hmm. a couple of years ago you probably don't know tournament fishing too much here recently at least without live scope now you're from florida yeah and so deep in florida is eight feet but yeah. how has live scope changed your fishing Last well, couple years. Well, in Florida, didn't really use life scope because I was mm -hmm. fish grass, you know, a minimum of like a foot, three foot of water. Right. So obviously, you know, it's really hard to use life scope. And then when I moved up here, obviously I had to get it so I can learn how to fish deeper and find fish quicker. Um, like you know, everybody says like life scope will changes the game. It does, but you actually got to catch them. You yeah. can see hundreds of fish down there, but you got to actually catch them. Yeah. But it, yeah, if if I didn't have life scope today, I. I would be lost to be honest, especially on these Highland reservoirs mm -hmm. and stuff 100%. like that. Makes total sense. What you, you got me another question right there? Let's pull it up. Philip Hutchinson, does Paul think the sand dredging on Lanier helps the fishery? Guess I don't know what he's talking about. So I guess up on the river, coming in the Chattahoochee, and this is what I think he's talking about. There's a river at the Lake Lanier. Yeah, there's one or two of them that goes in there. <laughs> it's so, above Browns Bridge. I can't. So answer you are, okay. So you're a south of the lake guy. Yeah, but definitely. I'm sorry. I can't answer that even, question. Even during the spring when large the large time, The only time I fish above that bridge is night tournaments, which I dearly love, and I won't go down south. Very interesting. So then I'm going to ask you this question, because I know in the spring a lot of guys like to go up north chasing the largemouth. Now, you stay on the south side. As far south as I can get. Plenty of largemouth down there? Or plenty, you just constantly Plenty of largemouth. See, I don't think people realize that. Plenty. Plenty of them. And in fact, in that electric only tournament a couple weekends ago, there was two as a six and a seven weighted on that. And that was in the Bald Ridge Marine area. But everybody thinks springtime, largemouth run up the rivers. But you're saying so, no. Don't need to, to be there. To way. my opinion, I mean my opinion, I'm mm -hmm. I, I'm not I'm not a river guy. I, I'm not a 
I, I don't feel like I can win up there. Do the spots get as big? Probably. Uh, all them boys go south for a reason. I've been trying to tell people that. So you think the best fish on Lanier is south of Browns Bridge, south end of the lake? That's correct. Except for, except for in the summer. I fish strictly for largemouth, and I'm going to stay above the bridge only because your time's limited. Uh, most of them's out of Laurel Park. And that's at night? It's at night. It's a night. Okay. You, if I'm above the bridge in a day tournament, they can just say, hey, Driscoll's lost. He ain't catching. <laughs> okay. All right. We definitely do. And Tim and, and Rob, too, if y'all y'all think of a question, definitely override me, jump in. Uh, we did have a question, though, right there from Guy B. If you, I'm going to ask both of you guys. I'm going to ask you both this. We'll, I'm going to start off with you, okay. and then we'll go to Paul. If you had to go out tomorrow without live scope, what would your pattern be? And let's say Lake Lanier, Lake, Lake, Lake Lanier. And I know you fish notly a lot. You know, you got the blue back hair and all that. No live scope. What are you throwing? I would go to marinas and throw a big glide bait or a mag drive. Okay. That's it. Big okay. Big bait. Yeah, big bait, get big fish. Simple as that. Fishing for five. And I've and I've and I've figured it out during the summer when we had that BFL two there. Um when they went down to three fish limit instead of five, that was my main focus. The target, the largemouth and marinas, because they tend to be bigger and they're they're literally homeschooled. Makes they don't really leave that area. They don't need to. There's so much bait. There's so much timber. There's areas for them to roam around and protect themselves. So I, that's what I would target 100%. Even right now in 40-something degree water. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Big fish stay, those big fish will stay shallow. Okay. Here. That's a good answer. What about you, Paul? Tomorrow, no live scope. You're on Lake Lanier. What are you throwing? I'm going to get my mouth out, and I'm going to find me a, a – not a main feeder creek, but I'm going to find me something that's got a small feeder in it after all this rain that's just got a little bit of stain in it. And I'm going to sit and I'm going to 2D to 35 foot of water and I'm going to take a 3.3 Kai Tech or a Z Swim Zoom and I'm going to put it on a 3 8 head and throw it all the way as far as I can throw it. Let it hit the bottom, swim it real slow back to the boat and you're going to catch fish. Okay. You guys, hey, write that down. Uh, got a couple of them. One, first up, right above Chris Taylor. Going up on the comment section now. And, guys, keep them coming. It makes it a lot easier for me. Jeremiah Giles, anytime you see see an old man wearing a Zoom bait company apparel, that guy knows how to fish. You've got a good relationship with Zoom. I fish with the best best guy I could ever fish with. I fish with Eddie Wortham, uh, manager at Zoom. Been with them a long time. Uh, they're great people, good bait company. and uh, Yeah. I mean, who doesn't throw Zoom? Name me a store you go in that don't have Zoom. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, that was one of the biggest things here at the store. When I got in with uh, Pittman Creek up there, I could finally buy Zoom. That's correct. That is it. And Zoom sells, but it's not. it don't just sell because of that. It's good stuff. It's they're, good stuff. They're and they, coming out with a lot of new live scoping uh, lures and stuff right as we speak to, that I think is going to be an, another good line for them. That's good. That's excellent. Hey, guys, you heard that right there here. Um one of the things, since you brought it up, and I'm going to get to these other questions, but since you said that, I've noticed that bait companies now are changing the way they make some baits that is geared directly towards the live scope. It's changing the way companies are producing product. So in your estimation, now that you've got it, that you use it, what makes a good live scope bait? What does it do that will separate it from you know any other bait? You're asking the wrong person. My floor, <laughs> my floorboard will be full. Do I fit in practice? Do I figure out one they want? <laughs> so it just changes uh, so I, often. I'm sure there's a. I like a something with a straight tail. I don't want a paddle tail on it. Right. Uh, I want something I can uh, get to the fish whichever way they're headed. And that's something I learned three weeks ago. My problem was I would see the fish floating out there over nothing. Right. Throw at them. Time it got to them, they was gone. So yeah. I quiz some of them young kids. Yeah. You know, what's what's the biggest help you can tell me? And they said, sit there, watch them for a second, see which way they're going, and lead them. And lead them. Yeah. And yeah. uh I started doing that a couple of weeks ago and my ratios went through the roof. See, that's one thing my cousin got it, and the one thing we learned quickly was everybody's got this idea that if you're on a point that the fish are just sitting on it stationary, spotted bass are moving. Especially, Constantly. they're moving, and to see the speed of how fast those fish are moving, I think that's one of the biggest benefits of live scope. It's you know the old school guys like 
you know, let's just chunk up on there like that fish is just sitting on that rock waiting for you to come by. Them jokers are moving constantly. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's what we learned from it. You know, and, and you, I guess we didn't know that uh, until we started watching them on live scope. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I they, didn't know that. I, I, we, you know, I use it more for a search tool. Uh, you're just so much dead water. You caught them on Saturday. You go fish the tournament on Sunday. We used to pull up and say, they're just not biting. Yeah. Now we realize they're not biting because they left. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> I know it. You know, You're just throwing it empty water at so, that point. So, you know, five minutes in a place that you caught them yesterday, we'd sit there 30 minutes just thinking, well, they're just not biting. Yeah. And the whole time, you know, we don't do that anymore. Now, do you think that's because of blueback hair? Because, you know, I know fishing with Ryan a lot. He can tell if, and you might be able to, Rob, that – the bait, he'll look at a bait bar and go, that's thread fin because of the way it's acting. Yeah. And that's blueback because the blueback go, Phew, they're gone. So yeah, they're gone. fast. Oh, I noticed that big time. Man. You noticed it, Tim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're gone. They don't see And the it. same with the spots. You pull in and you kind of see them and maybe the wind or boat position, by the time you kind of get yourself ready to fire, it's where the hell they go. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone. So I think, I think a lot of people argue, and Randy Blockett's one of them, you know, it's spotlight and fish. <laughs> now listen back in my younger days i might have been we call it pre-jesus danny uh, i might have been into some things that i shouldn't have been into and i know some guys that would spotlight a deer when you spotlight a deer that deer freezes because you got the light in its eyes it doesn't move that's not true with live scope you might see the fish but that fish is moving you're not really spotlighting that fish and that's what you just learned that's right yeah you, so. you beat a you beat a fish laying under a dock or just stationary, you beat him with that live scope, he's going to move. Yeah. He's going to move. Yeah. I I, I think it's, that was one of the big I things. I believe as soon as you see him following your bait, you better turn off of them uh, once you know they're on it. Because I, I believe when they're sitting still, them floaters I don't think so bad. But you get in some shallower water and see a group of them under a dock, don't fish for them, shine that live scope on them, just hold it on them. They're going to move. Yeah, they'll move. Now, you mentioned uh, leading a fish. So let's say you see one on your live scope. When you think leading, how far are you throwing in front of them? What's your best guess? Talking to Tim Hawkins, Tybo, oh, okay. some of them, yeah. that, that I could believe what they tell me. Uh, are you saying Tim Hawkins won't lie to you? No, he won't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He, I, like I wouldn't him. ask him. I like him. You ask little Paul. He'll lie. He'll oh, say I, 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 I'm wasting good air. Yeah, he'll say Ask Randy you. Dover. I'm wasting good air. Yeah, I got you. Uh, uh, you know, Scott Barnes, Tim Hawkins, there's certain people I, you, I can call, you know, when yeah. I need help. Yeah. Uh, and I believe a lot of these 20-year-old guys that are hammers, mm -hmm. you know, your meals and them, I believe if you ask them, and you're nice. I, I believe they'll they'll help you. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe they're all about it for themselves because they say, "Hey, I can beat that old guy anyhow." Right. Uh, but they'll help you. And th there, to answer your question, they say, "Whatever you're, you're throwing a quarter ounce, and he's thirty foot down. You just don't want it to fight. Don't want it falling behind them, and you don't want it on. You don't want it to them. You want to keep it above them. Okay. Uh, and and as soon as they see it, start taking it away from them. Uh, I'm sure there's different ways. That's what they've told me. Yeah. I believe them. You know, when them guys keep, they keep winning. They're, that's not by accident. Oh, I know. But don't sell yourself short because every time I no, look I'm going to compete. Yeah, that's what I say. Every time I look in the tournament things, your name's up there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I want to compete. I, listen, I, I'm, I I'm mad when I go home and I ain't in the, I ain't in the pay line. I understand. I get it. And that, it ain't about the money. Because if you do this for the money, you're in the wrong business. That's what I tell everybody. Amen. If you're if you're trying to make your mortgage payment by fishing these Saturday tournaments, you got a problem. You probably don't need to be out there anyway. But it is the competitive edge because it's bragging rights. Tell me I'm wrong. Oh no, no, I know. One hundred percent. Yeah, I want to. I want to be in that pay line. Yeah. Uh, my goal in them skeeter things, it is not. You can tell me I went five trips to Clark Hill back and forth. That that seventeen hundred dollars that I did good, <laughs> no, I didn't. Right. Yeah. Uh, but my goal is I want to be at the end of the year 
I want to get paid every time. And it ain't because of money. I, I want to be, hey, that's the guy we got to worry about. It's yeah. pride. Uh, 100%. That's why I've been trying to get you on the show. So I knew that. Now, now, Rob, you're in a little bit different boat because if you do well, this will be your source of income and everything. I mean, if you actually start making it in an NPFL and then if you decide to go to another series, you know, you will be paying your mortgage yeah. in that. So what's the difference in the competitive nature of him and you, or is it the same? Um, I mean, it depends. I mean, I'm fit and competing for a lot more money. So a lot is, to me, it's a lot more on a table. Yeah. You're spending a lot more and everything. Um, you know, the, the weekend tournaments and stuff like that. Like if you expect to make a mortgage on that, yeah. Then like what you said, like, good luck. Yeah. You know, but like, God, I'd be broke. You have, <laughs> if you're fishing for a hundred thousand dollars, your goal is to get paid. One hundred percent. You know? Yeah. 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 So, but let me ask. So, so like he's talking about pride. They still got to be a little bit of pride in what you do too, because I know there's a group of anglers up there that you're like, there's always one guy. And if you ain't got to name a name, but I know when I fish certain tournaments, I'm like, I want to kick that guy's ass. Certainly. And I don't care if I finish 30th as long as he finishes 32nd. Yeah. Now, does that run true in the MPFL? Yes and no. I mean, I, I know I'm Come going, on now, that you can tell. No, there's there's guys out there like the, the Patrick Walters, the Trent Palmers. You know, you know, like, dude, I gotta go against this guy. But at the end of the day, if you accomplish and you beat them, it just makes the, the icing on the cake so much better. It's sweeter. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So let me ask you, and you don't have to name names, but are there guys on the near when you see that they're entering a tournament with you, you're like, I, I want to win, but I want to kick that guy's ass. Every, every <laughs> time. And you got to name names. I don't want you to name unless you want to. Oh, little Paul's one of them. Paul Marks Jr. Yes, sir. So, like, that's it. When I go in, I, I see Paul Marks Jr. It's like, I don't care if I finish 20th as long as I beat Paul. Him and Randy Dover. Yeah, Randy's – I need to get Randy, but I heard he wouldn't talk to me either. Well, he would. He would he? Guy, yeah. I need to reach out to him. because Yes, dude, that dude has to wear a hammock. Yeah. To tote his sack around. Woo. <laughs> well, there you go. Not only is he riding a short bus so he can tell people he's hung, somebody's go. toting around a hammock. Oh, I've grabbed him. <laughs> You'll grab him. <laughs> I, I've grabbed him before. I asked him. Him little he goes strutting through the parking lot. Yeah. I don't want him to drag. You'll help him lift them up. I lifted them up. Lifted them up. Okay. Well, that's a problem I ain't never had. You can ask my wife. So <laughs> I got a couple of good questions. Yeah, actually, yeah, bring me up. I got to drill this back in. We're talking about nuts. Kevin's got a question, then uh, maybe Scott right after him. Okay, both of you can ask this. What is Paul's rod, reel, and line setup? And I'm going to guess, let's just say – because I know you fish a lot of different things, but we were talking about live scoping, and you talk about throwing, I assume, a swim bait or a Kitek when you said quarter ounce and you're leading them. Correct. Okay. So let's just take that bait right there. Got a quarter ounce swim bait. What's your rod line set up and your reel? I'm going to use seven-foot spinning rods. I may have one or two bait casters laid on my deck. Everything's going to be spinning rods. They're going to be 15-pound uh, cigar smackdown. And uh, – Eight eight pound on anything I'm throwing in open water, ten pound if I'm throwing at blinkers and rock or I'm throwing in a ditch with rock. Anything that anything's got rock. I don't care if it's 30 foot, 40 foot, it's got rock, I'm throwing 10 pound. What kind of so you throw cigar uh fluoro on that? Tatatsu. Tatatsu. The leaders. Okay. Yes. All right, that's perfect. And uh what reel are you throwing? Uh and rod. 2500s, uh Shimano's. I use the little green cheap G Loomis. I use the the high dollar ones. It, it really doesn't matter to me. Okay, I like that. What about you, Rob? So let's just say there ain't none of them cheap. No, they ain't none cheap no yeah. more. There's not. I cheap. use little red label ones. Yeah. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have friends, you know, Finn's twins, uh, Greg Holly. They, I need they, to get them on here. You do. They because they, they help they, me with line and stuff. Uh, but you know, they're also musicians, big time. Like I could get them up here to play like a concert. For you us. could. They can do All it. Right, we're going, so, hey, fish got, North Georgia band coming. Band. Yeah. So, like, uh, so I think I think you, but Greg's your dad, right? Your Greg's yes, your dad. Greg. If you're watching this, let's set up with your boys up there because I actually watch your Facebook post where they're playing music, and I I dig that stuff because I have no musical talent whatsoever. I got looks, but I didn't get talent. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, you same thing. Quarter ounce swim bait or three eight swim bait. What's your setup? Uh, exactly like him. Uh, seven foot, seven foot one. Um, or a seven foot six, really uh, fast action. 
Uh, I do about 10, 10, 10 pound braid yeah. and about eight, eight pound fluorocarbon, sometimes six, okay. if they're really pressured. If they're really pressured. Yeah. Now, when you get on like a rocky area with him, do you up your line size like he does? He went from eight to 10 when he's throwing on rocks, right? At blinkers, if you're throwing at blinkers, Paul Driscoll throws 10, right? Correct. And I love that term blinkers. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I got multiple setups. So I got, you know, between six pound fluorocarbon, eight to 10 to 12, um, depending on the clarity of the water. And again, it's all about the pressure. If they're pressurized, especially like you, you know, you go down south at the south end of the lake, that's Correct. pressured a lot. I'm going to use lighter line. Okay. Yeah. And then the thing with, with the, the fluorocarbon, what I use, I, I extend my leader pretty far. You know, some people might tie it like two foot leader. I go about four foot. Okay. Yeah. So I'm one of them weird ones that throw like a 15 foot leader. You like, are. I got a lot of fluoro on the end of my break. What about you? How long's your leader? Shoot. I really, uh, fortunate enough, I don't have to pay for it. So I reel, <laughs> I reel five reels into my reel, uh, just so I don't have to retire because I can't see good. <laughs> God, Too long I, to retire. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of things that stop working when we get older, ain't that's great. Kidding. Oh, good lord. All right. Now let me ask you this. What knot do you tie from braid to fluoro? Dude, you're asking now. Uh, you're asking educated. Yeah, people. I am asking. You don't know the name of it? I don't. Uh, Describe it. Yeah, maybe a uh, uniknot or something. I don't know. I, I just put a loop in it, wrap it six times on one side, stick it back through, do the other the same way, and pull it. Okay, that works. What do you tie? I'm the most uneducational person when it comes to fishing knots, and I don't know exactly what he's exactly saying. Exactly. Uni knot, whatever. No, I just, that's I an Alberto knot, knot, if I'm not mistaken. That's like an Alberto. Six, seven, one way, yeah, six, seven, one way back through. You go, through and you go seven times around, and then you go seven times back and pull it back through. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, Alberto. Yeah. Sometimes I do five, whatever it ends up. <laughs> Listen, but I started, hey. I tell you, I start uh, listening to them young kids. Yes. I started on my, uh, if I'm scoping them in open water. Start tying this. Uh, what's that not called? It's a. It's just a loop. It really the bait's hanging. It ain't tied tight. It's. Well, I have no idea. Yeah, so if you guys a, in the comment, no, you you definitely tell. It's us. a circle of some kind, and it does not have. It's not tight. It's not cinched down. So the bait's actually on a free, just loop. Just a loop. So it's a loop with the knot. Yeah, it Correct. keeps the, the blade. Right. It lets everything yeah. freely. Yeah. It's about like adding an old style clip to your front of your crankbait. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't have to retine it, let it swim free. Well, yeah. Almost like a swivel in a sense. That's correct. Yeah. It's just a loose little. Yeah, I don't know what that, I, yeah. I know what it is, but I don't know. The if day. you guys <laughs> know the name or whatever it is they're Cole, talking about. Cole Wood know. knows because he's the one had to call him on the phone and tie it the other day because I got confused. Have you ever tried to tie an FG knot? Do you, have you seen that? Uh, it's it like only, 22 times this way. You got to wrap the line around your foot and hold it over your head. Some of them saltwater knots are like that. I know. 16 one way, 16 back. Listen, I ain't got the patience for that. I have I, tied I an FG knot and threw some really nice lures a good distance across. Not exactly. Like if, it just goes poop and breaks. You and hear nothing that. but air. Have I missed any questions? Because um, there's, a, there's a ton. Scott Barnes wanted to know about the. Scott's wanting to show him a little love that he's doing base. good. Oh, I uh, see. So, all right. So you're doing great, Paul. Hey, look at it. Look at it. Oh, Scott, I like Scott. What do you think happened to the jerkbait bite on there? It seems to have declined over the years. Boating Atlanta days, a Stacy and a pointer was the deal, but not now. I, I don't know. I bet if you Good question. Took, you know, and I hate to bring his name up, but I bet if you took Paul Mark Sr., which is probably one of the better of the jerkbait people, he's won a lot of money with it. If you take him out there with a jerkbait, I don't believe we fish it as much as we used to. We got so many options now. It used to be a, a jig, a worm, a spinner bait, or jerk bait. Yeah. You know, that, that was it. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you competed with. Uh, I, I caught I caught some uh, a week ago, you know, on, on jerk bait in the back east creeks. You can still catch them on it. I, I don't think we fish it like we used to. Do you throw a jerk bait a lot? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think about that comment? <sighs> It's like you mentioned earlier, like there's so many different options and so many different, you know, things that we can fish. And I think that's kind of like the reason the jerk bait kind of like started. Well, what do you think about the new Berkeley Craig? I haven't even used them yet. I, I've know. used it. I had it before it Get, come out. I, I've used it a while. Wait a it, second. Hold on a second. What do you mean you had it before it come out? I had it for four or five months. Mm. Must, oh, be, okay. must be nice. Friend, friend <laughs> hooked me up. Okay. So what do you think about it? Be honest. You ever seen you ever seen a shad back up to a fish? Never. 
All right, then. There you go. So what did we talk about it last week, Tim? Didn't we say it looked like the flying lure, that, that crap on late night television? Yeah, the old flying lure that flies away from you. Will, will it catch fish? Yes. Yeah. It, it'll put them in their face longer so you can jerk it, jerk it, and it, it stays in their face longer. Will it catch fish? Yes. But there's a but to it. I can but, see guys. I'll take a. I'll take any other jerk bait and more than likely catch that same fish. What do you think though about the depth being able to get a little bit deeper? With that it? that's the only advantage you got. That's the advantage. You can throw one in. You can let it sink. No, I haven't let it sink down to them. Yeah, because it's a sinking bait. Yes, it's a sinking bait. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a couple of them before I go to Logan. But it's a new bait. It's gonna produce fish. Yeah, you know everything. Something different. Something new. Those fish don't see, especially spots. You right. know, they haven't gotten adapted to it. Right. You're going to catch a little bit more fish. Spots are just pissed off fish by nature, hit everything, I think, like that. But yeah. that makes sense. Get two of them together. One of them is going to eat because they right. the other one to get it. That's exactly right. They're jealous yeah. and they're, they're mm -hmm. competitive, like you say. But that's interesting because you're the first person when we talk about that thing that says, have you ever seen a bait fish back up? And that's got me thinking now. Mm -hmm. So that's. Very you know, sensible. That's sensible. And you got a lot of experience fishing. So that makes Sometimes it gets me in trouble. No, I like it. I like the honest answer. I, th I think that's – um. damn, now I'm thinking about it. I don't think I've ever seen a bait fish back up. Generally, you're pulling away to try to get them to Trying chase. Trying to run it away from them. That's very interesting. I, I'm going to be thinking about that tonight when I try to lay down and go to sleep. I'm like, well, Randy's uh, – I mean, uh, Paul said uh, they don't back up. So the Craig is not a new concept. Uh, concept. The Japanese have had a backslide lures for years – Berkeley's uh, last few re releases are just JDM knockoffs. Okay, that's from Jeremiah Giles. So um, looking for questions here right there. Scratch fishing. Pull that one up. There'll be a tournament one on on that curve. They well, will be. They will be, but everybody will go up and buy it. Yeah. I've seen it. A lot I mean, of people are it. I've seen it because you like what you said. It's a new bait. Oh, yeah. It'll wipe off the shelves that hadn't already. already. It has. Yeah. It has. And like, I mean, I've got some coming in here on my latest order to the store, but We've seen that with so many baits that the first few months, everybody's got to have it. And then all of a sudden it just disappears. Now, I'm not saying the creds will, but um, what's that Z-Man topwater bait that's got the blade on the back of it? You know what I'm talking about? No, the uh, sure. Hell, I got them over there on the wall. When it first came out, um, everybody had to have it. And then nobody comes in and looks for it anymore. It's like, nah, whatever. So everybody's got to get it. Pull that one up. If Paul could only fish one technique, Oh, this is good. This is deep, right? Yeah, it's a good question. If you could only fish one technique and one bait for the rest of your life, what would it be? Just because I enjoy it. I don't know. I can catch fish year round on it. It'd be a bent worm. A what? They got a name for it. Uh, you call it what my, you want. My friends, they know what I'm talking about. It is a uh, Cinco, you hook in the middle. Wacky. Oh, okay. Hey, I like I got stuff. another name too. Uh, you call it a bent worm? Uh, no, Ned Ridge really called a. I call it a. Nico. 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 Yeah, yeah, put a little weight in it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I'll hook it a little bit more towards the head than the middle so it'll fall faster. Yeah. I literally, this time of year, I, I'm not scared to throw it at a 50 foot fish on the bottom. Me neither. That's my favorite and way to fish. I love to fish it. Uh, probably fish that year round. I do too. If I'm I in a tournament, use no I don't worms. I, I don't drop shot. I don't use worms. I used to be a big time worm fisherman, and I just come to the realization that a Senko, uh I personally, you know, just use a fluke stick. Yeah, I'm going to either leave the tail on it, or I'm going to knock the tail off of it, and I'm going to catch bigger fish. You know what, Tim? I feel absolutely validated now by saying I throw a wacky worm year round. Why is that? If, if Paul Driscoll throws it year round, then I feel I feel pretty good that I throw it year round. Because some people look at me when I say, "Do you throw it weightless?" No, you like the weight, so you you like I, I like throwing a weightless one. I'll chunk it over a forty foot brush pile and just sit. Yeah. I can't. I don't have the patience. No, I like jerk. watching it. I watch, like watching it go down the side of a brush pile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spiral. and watch them go or, or see a little pimple on the bottom and forty foot. No, it's cold. It's a fish. Uh, throw it to see if he's going to rise up when he gets five foot from the bottom. He rises up. He's a cold ass. <laughs> I love this guy. Blisters and pimples. I'm telling you. So let, uh, blinkers. Blinkers and pimples. All right. So what about you? 
you only get one for the rest of your life. And then, Tim, I want you to answer that question too. So, Rob, one bait for the rest of your life? Probably a fluke because you can fish it all year long. You fish it anywhere in the United States. Probably a fluke. I love a jackhammer, a chatterbait. That's just me, but it would be a fluke. That's right. Look at all them comments. You know, just made Danny's night by saying, you <laughs> say, well, listen, I ain't lying to you. I, that is absolutely my favorite. And I think you can catch fish year round, largemouth or spots on a wacky egg. Tim, put that camera on your beautiful mug. If I only get one bait, right? Just one. Yep. A spinner bait. Call me crazy, but that's a harness streak. It is. I grew up fishing wise over. It's only three feet deep. So we always finished uh, our fish spinner baits. Spinner bait. You throw spinner bait a lot? Zero, except for at night. Night time. Tournament. Throwing that night, not spinner bait. Night tournament's the only one I own. That's the only time you throw a spinner bait? The only time I throw it's harness bait. About like throwing Alabama rig. You don't throw them either. You're right? just hoping to snag something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I got you. That's a good answer. I got you. So uh, let's see. Trent Gober, pull that one up. Oh, where you got that? There? Pull old Trent up right Can there. Can you win fishing deep? Anymore? On Lanier, like in the past. Hell, I thought everybody was fishing deep on Lanier. He's right talking now. about fishing row beds, uh, rock ledges out there in 40 to 60 foot. Yeah. You can. Okay. Uh, turn your live scope off or because you're not going to see them when you're sitting on top looking out in a hole. Right. They're, they're laying tight. You, you, uh, you can. Uh, that tournament, me and Greg won uh, right before Christmas. Uh, we had 22 pounds. Our first stop was just to let them blinker fish warm up a little God, bit. I love that, yeah. So we went out and sat on a just a old one of Trent's places. He don't fish here no more, so I took it over. Yeah. Went and sat on it. We called uh, – was throwing a Cinco on a 3.6 tanks. I was spinning rod. We caught two that was uh, four and a half pounders. Yeah. Had a good solid limit to start. And I believe you could have sat there and, and finished off a 21, 22 pound bag. Okay. It, it's a lot harder than it used to be. Uh, but it can be done. Hole fishing to me is a thing of the past. So do you consider yourself a running gunner like some of the, I get all these young guys like Emil. And even Brock Turner's talked about they'll go, they'll look, they'll scan, they'll see a brush pile. If there's nothing there, they just leave, or they might make two, three casts and they're gone. I am a running gun guy. Uh, don't want to throw many times over a place. I got no patience. Uh, this term we just had at Clark Kill. Yeah. I literally fished two small creeks all day back and forth because I knew there was a winning sack in them too. And I dissected them two places so good that I felt like if I kept on in there, eventually I was going to uh, get a good check out of there. So yeah. usually I am. I, very rarely will I sit on a hole and just fish. Okay, so that's the thing of the past to you. It is for me. Okay, what about you? I wanted to ask him a question. Yeah, ask. Absolutely. I love it. It's about forward facing sonar. So since you've gotten adapted to it, do you feel like, do you enjoy it? Or do you like miss the old school way? That's a good question. I want to win. Uh, so I didn't <laughs> have no choice. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish they never would have come out with it. I wish they never would have come out with side scan. I go out there and work my butt off. Uh, Greg, his boys, my younger friends, Cole Wood, they all go out there and help me cut brush. I'm not able to drag that stuff no more. Right. And we don't cut brush. We cut trees. Uh, some people's got it figured out. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, we put that stuff out and used to, you you could ride forever and have that hold yourself. Uh, somebody had to get awful lucky to find it. Now we put it out tonight. Somebody's found it by the next day. Yeah, that is the one thing. Uh, so it, I wish it would have never come out. But in saying that, if you don't adapt, with the technology that we are handed the tools, uh, you're going to fall to the wayside. Yeah, you're never going to succeed. No. Simple as that, yeah. Yeah, no, man, that makes sense. But it is interesting, you know, you saying that, yeah, there was a day gone by when all you brush builders could put something out. The only person that knew it was there was you, and you had that to yourself. And now, just like you said, put it out, go three days later, something, somebody's sitting on it. That's correct. You can't 100%. hide nothing anymore. You can, you can have now – 
a place that you fished for 20 years in timber. I call them hard spots that is in the timber. You got just those soft bottom, but there is that one hard spot and it's guaranteed to drop down and catch fish on most of the time. Because, of the, hard, in because of the hardness. Because that's where the fish want to get when it gets cold. I got For you. whatever reason, I don't know. Now, you can roll in there, and there will be three acres of that timber there, and that bull will be spot-locked on that because that, gar that, that forward-facing Garmin will show that hard spot. It'll glow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got that. Hey, and you guys in the background, if you guys got questions too, feel free to throw them out here. We'll we'll definitely ask them. That's interesting though. But I guess the, the question is though, which do you enjoy? Do you enjoy the days of the past? You know, or now? I enjoy now. Do you really? Okay. I really do. Uh it's a challenge to me. Like I said, you know, little Paul, he had that stuff for a year and a half before a lot of people had it, it just because we, I didn't want to change. I thought I don't need it. Yeah. And, uh, one day I decided, you know, I'm going to get it now. Change. I've got the big wire. I've yeah. got the 16 volt battery. I, I've got everything. I think I need to make it the best it can be. If, if we're going to use it, I'm going to use it the fullest. I, I don't have all, you know, people joke that I take, uh, see Alice in the morning to get my blood flowing to compete with them kids. Yeah. And, and that's, that's true, but I'm going to use every tool I got, everything I can to compete. Is that see Alice good? Yeah. Is that some good stuff? Yeah. I'll it actually it does work. Time. I've tried it many times. I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen, time. listen, though, You're young. There comes a time in a man's life where any help he can get. It hasn't got to that point yet, but when it does, see uh, Alice will listen, be in my mind. Listen, if you have a reaction <laughs> lasting longer than four hours, seek medical attention right there. I was like, well, again, who in the world the wants record. that? Good Lord. 39 years I've had this, my wife and uh, got to keep them happy and they got to be happy when you take yeah. off in the mornings yeah. and be gone for a couple of days. Uh -huh. uh, you can't go, all joking aside, you, you can't, you can't be competitive. You can't have fun if you don't have a support staff at home. 100%. That, that it's all for you, want you to do good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I got it, mate. Got to keep mama happy. Dude, I've got it, mate. Trust me. You got to keep mama. Didn't you just get married? Yes, I did. You did. You at got, Vegas. At Vegas. Went out to Vegas. Did you in the Elvis wedding? Yes, we did. You did. Oh, <laughs> Heck yeah. You, you actually did an Elvis No, we did not. Oh, no. <laughs> No. Oh, my God. Dude, I was going to see pictures after the show. Yeah, no, I know he got married. You didn't do the Elvis thing? No, no we didn't. We had it planned. We, we we did the Vegas thing because we didn't really want a big wedding and spend all the money because I have to fish this year. So yeah, you got to like, pay you know, for some entry fees. Let's, let's take it on the cheaper side. Let's go to Vegas. Where, where's fun. your first tournament at? Logan Martin. Logan Martin. That's uh, next week. I leave Saturday. You leave I start Saturday? practice Sunday. You ever fish Logan Martin? I have. One time. You have? One time. So I'm gonna ask him what he's. I want to ask you what you thought of Logan Martin first. Okay. What'd you think of it when you fished it? Bunch of little big spotted bass. All I could catch out of it. So I, I don't got nothing good to say. Nothing about good it. to say about Logan Martin. Yeah. All right. How about you? Have you fished it at all? I pre practiced already. I've okay. done. I've done my homework. So is it like what he said? I'm not gonna answer that. You know. Oh, you can't, can you? No, it's not that. No, Listen, I gotta make sure there's rules with you guys. When I pre practiced. Yeah. I just gonna say this out because I know a lot of guys from the league are watching. Sorry, guys. I had a blast. Okay, good. And good. that's all I'm going to say. I've been there one day. Yeah. And well, that's all I'm not the guy that I asked. I always forget with you tournament guys that, that there are rules. Well, it's not that. I just I know, but I have. Uh, you don't want to jinx yourself either. I remember my first year, I was all like telling people everything, and now I'm just going to keep my lips shut. Yeah. You know, and that's the best. After the tournament, I'll I'll spill all the beans what I have planned. You can tell me after the show. I will. I'll tell you. You can tell me after the show like that. <laughs> the um, secret juice. Is Paul Fish Alatuna. Never, never fished it uh, since. I ain't fished it in 40 years. That lake is junk. 40 uh, years. 40 years. I, I lived on it for about a year. Yeah. Uh, fished it some, but no. You know, it's got the blue backs in it now, though. You think that, I mean, and uh, okay, let me ask you this, because you lived, look at that, like you're Methuselah. You have fished Lanier long enough that you know Lanier before Blueback Heron. Correct. And you know Lanier after Blueback Heron. So how did you adjust to the Bluebacks once they got, you know, once they took hold on Lake Lanier? 
I don't know that I ever adjusted to them. Uh, it seemed like once the blue bats got in there, it was a lot easier to a lot easier to throw something and keep it flying through the water on top. You know, you work your top water base a lot faster. Uh, flukes, whatever they wanted them flying. Yeah, uh, they like it moving. They like it moving. Uh, yeah, I'm because blue backs are fast. They move. They're constantly moving. That's what's interesting because you say that, and then you came from Florida. Ain't no blue back herring down in Okeechobee. So nope. you had to learn that game too. Yeah. So that was a big adjustment for you. Yeah, it was all a big adjustment because, you know, we only have a certain amount of bait fish at the lake, um, Okeechobee. <clears throat> and then when you come here, there's just so many different varieties. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's kind of hard to pencil point. Like you were explaining, like I, now I can tell what a heron is, you know, what a gizzard shad is, what an actual shad is. You know, I can tell the difference now. On your live scope. On the live scope. Yeah. 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 How long did it take you to figure that out? I still hadn't figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I just know it's bait and fish eat bait. Fish, you know what you like. No, bait. I can tell a thread fin and a heron. Uh, How do you tell? Just from the size and the, the way they move around. The, yeah, the way they yeah. move. Yeah. It's really what the way they move too. Yeah, like you can yeah. tell really quick. Yeah, the bluebacks are like spots. They're not sitting still. No, That's they're they're spots. moving all over the place. Wide yeah. What do y'all think about the Corps of Engineers experimenting with no tournaments between Memorial Day and Labor Day and how that would affect Lanier if it were implemented? There is a lake, I believe it's in another state. Randy Blockett made a video on that uh, where I, I think you can have tournaments, but I think you cannot have them between certain times of the day, uh, between Memorial Day and Labor Day. So let's just take Lanier, especially summertime. A lot of guys go down to three fish limits or they go to night tournaments, whatever. Um, what would you think about if the Corps came out tomorrow and said, you know what, late Lanier, no tournament fishing between Memorial Day and Labor Day? Me personally? Yeah, absolutely. Give me your honest opinion. I'd go into DTs. Yeah, you got to have that company. Yeah, you got to have want it. something, uh, you know, every couple weeks. Uh, we have way too many night tournaments. Anybody got a set of scales? have them i wish they was just one a week uh one big more, one get everybody. more people it, yeah. but you know and it's fine but i like to fish so i don't want them to tell me i don't like the government tell me nothing amen amen i believe that lord knows they try enough what about you well how would that affect well of course how many tournaments do you guys have on the mpfl between six okay so six how many events. how many of them are in the summer you kind of end right about what there is um there's actually two in the summer. There's going to be uh, Lake Pickwick in July, um, which is in Tennessee, and then uh, Saginaw Bay, Michigan, in August. So there's two events that are in the summer. Okay, all right. Well, how would you feel about that if they said, "Hey, you can't you can't fish tournaments between Memorial Day and Labor Day"? It is what it is. Yeah. So you would just accept it. I have you wouldn't to like it. it, but I wouldn't like it, but I have to accept it. Yeah. I mean, if it's going to help the fishery and 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 for the future, I mean, I'm so for that, but. Yeah. I mean, if it's not going to really do anything, then let's just keep grinding. I want to say that one of the reasons was safety because there's so many pleasure boaters. But out. next thing you know, they'll be telling you, you can't run but 30 mile an hour. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, always you. something. That it, you know, once they start, they never quit. Very uh, true. That's why That's why all you guys that love guns and all that don't that's like it. It, We're it, not it having a, a background check because you go to that, then they go to this, and then they go to that. The re yeah, no, I get it 100%. Uh, Clayton Woods wants me to ask you about your FLW days. <laughs> uh, Tell me a little bit about fishing FLW. FLW was coming to uh, Lanier. Uh, I had the opportunity to Yamaha to help me out. With my entry fees, uh, I was all for it. I thought, you know, this this be good. I can do it. And uh, I finished thirteenth at the first one in uh, at Lanier, and then I found out I did. I wasn't. Let's say I, I'm not saying I wasn't good enough. I wasn't familiar. We had five days of practice. I'd go to these lakes. Uh, I'd never seen them before. Never been out of the state of Georgia, pretty much fishing. And it take me four or five days to figure out how to catch a fish, where they lived. These other guys would go knowing how to catch them, knowing what to do. Uh, they had a network. Uh, I was pretty much by myself. I, it was a 200-boat field. I was a 60 to an 80th place guy. Uh, 
that's where I always finished. Uh, I was fortunate enough my rookie year to uh, make the Forestwood Cup. Got to do something a lot of people never get to do. Right. Uh, I got to go to the big banquet, uh, take my wife, uh, go in a big coliseum, get embarrassed with my two fish. Uh, but I wouldn't take nothing for it today. Yeah. Uh, economy fell apart. I fell out of a deer stand, messed myself up. Uh, so I only got to do it the one year. But, but still. It was uh, something that a lot of people never get to experience, so I'm thankful for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you reached the the pinnacle. I did. Of of what a lot of guys out here on Saturdays, they're out here, they're fishing these tournaments, and they're having fun. But they always dream like they think that professional angling, that way of life. <laughs> I hate you know, to do it now. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's diff- It's probably oh, different it's now. Oh, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. So these much competition. So good. Uh, you think you're good, and you go, you get in there and watch, and you, you just amazed. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. It's a guy that thinks, you know, he comes out of high school. I can play softball. I was a great high school baseball. I could have gone pro. Like, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Now, you, though, Rob, jumping in the MPFL, you're experiencing this is going to be your second year. You took a year off. You're going to be in your second year. You know, what opened your eyes about tournament fishing that maybe you didn't realize going into it? Because you probably had those dreams of, you know, grandeur and this is going to be great i'm going to be a pro angler and then all of a sudden somebody just popped you right across the forehead something had to wake you up to like this might be a little tougher than i thought well it was my first year i yeah. got my butt kicked yeah i got my ass kicked period yeah all year long i only got one check uh, i had multiple chances to get a check but i kicked myself in the ass yeah you know at the end of the day it's really it's about you and against the fish it's not against the other people and i and i, I was so worried about what other people were doing and not worrying about myself and then obviously taking this year off really just made me realize what what I was missing and stuff like that. And not to worry about what other people are doing. Just worry about what yourself is in front of you. And hopefully this year will be a good year. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Since uh, we're going to do the question of the week, before I do that, you've been there. You did that. You got the T-shirt. What advice would you give to him about trying to – have a professional career in fishing. If you could give him one piece of advice right now or anybody watching, what would it be? Dude, I ain't got but five friends. Don't take no advice from me. Oh, come on now. No. I, I, you know, you, you got to believe in yourself. Uh, you can't listen to doc talk. It, you can't, you know, you're struggling. It's very easy to listen to these guys at night, you know, standing around the dock in the mornings. You know, they're catching them. You cannot catch other people's fish. You just can't. And uh, you believe in yourself and not worry. You know, if you, if you ain't got to worry about things at home, money, you just, you'll do so much better. Okay. So there you go. Biggest thing is just believe in yourself and have confidence. Think, hey, I'm as good as them guys. I just got to have just a little bit of luck. And, and luck goes a long ways in this it sport. It does. It a does. long ways. Yeah, so that that is absolutely – take that advice right oh, there. So have, have that self-confidence. Paul was looking for one big bite. One big bite, what would his game plan be? One right big bite. this time of the year. Yeah, let's go this time of the year. Go to the very back of a creek and throw a chatterbait. On Lake Lanier? Yes. A chatterbait. Right now. Now you're speaking my language. With no grass or nothing? I want, no, no. I want some stained water, fresh stained water. Not cold stained water, but you get a warm rain like this, and you get a stain, not not mud, not Oconee mud, Sinclair mud, but just stained. You can you can throw a chatterbait, uh, and and I caught two sevens doing it uh, a few years ago in the morning doing it. Really? Because I would not have expected of all the answers you had, it would be a chatterbait. I won't throw a spinner bait. That's what chat- that was my next question because you said I ain't throwing no spinner bait. No. Now, why would you throw a spinner bait? I mean, a chatter bait over a spinner bait. Same way I throw a fish head in them same places. It just works. It just it just works. How'd you figure it out? Because I used to back in the old days, you could go in the back of these ditches and take a quarter ounce jig and put some kind of twin tail on it. And just throw it back now. You use a fish head or a kitek or something like that. You throw it back there in ten foot, 
and just reel it real slow where it was off the bottom and just catch them. Really? And then they come out with this thing called a chatterbait. And uh, even to this day, I won't use uh, the new ones. I, I Just the old original. You like the old original chatterbaits? Yeah. You don't get into that jackhammer and, and no, none of that crap? No, and I don't use it uh, except for winter time. Do you throw a trailer on it? I do. What kind of trailer is on your chatterbait? Original, the original Zoom flute and white. All right, then. There you go. That's, that's some knowledge right there, guys. Now, did you expect him to say chatterbait? No, no chance. I thought you were going to say spinnerbait. No. <laughs> well, like he had Rob's undivided attention all of a sudden. He, he like, had Rob oh, worked up. Like, yeah, so like, you're, you're speaking my language right now. Well, like like you mentioned, like you prefer to throw that over a spinnerbait. Like the the jackhammer, the chatterbait is like the Ford face of sonar. You have to adapt to it. The spinnerbait, right. to me, it's, it's just it's, it's not done. There are certain areas in the United States that you can throw a spinnerbait. It might be more utilized than a chatterbait. But the jackhammer, I, the majority of people oh, in the United States throw a jackhammer. And the jackhammer is the number one bait in the United States that you can get a check on. It's it's better than the original. Uh, yeah. I guess I only throw it January, February, beginning of March. I'm not going to throw it, but the first 30, 45 minutes in the mornings in these places. So I don't get to experiment and old people get set in their ways. Yeah. That's why I practice yeah. every tournament. I practice Cole Wood. He's 25, 26. He goes with me because he will open my eyes. He'll, he'll slap me in the back of the head and say, dude, try, try something new. Let's, let's, let's do it. This but you way. know, it works. It works, but I learn a lot from these kids. Oh no, there's no doubt because they're definitely technology savvy and everything, but I get set. You get somebody my age 90 percent of them you got your mark hardens you got a bunch of them that still can compete yeah but you, most of them still got their jig still got their worm uh-huh still got that they, 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 they don't they won't change uh you're not going to compete anymore yeah but let me ask you what, what let me ask you this what's your number one confidence bait Right now, if you had one bait you had to throw tomorrow in there, what would it be? Would you go with that, Nico? To catch numbers. To yes. catch numbers, Nico. But like that, like that uh, viewer said, if you're going after one, like if let's say you got five, you got four in the boat or five in the boat, you really need that kicker. And I'm gonna pick a chatter bait up or a quarter ounce fish head with a white fluke on them, and I'm gonna go find me a feeder creek with some stained water. And I'm going to fish 10 foot or less. By gosh, right there. Some knowledge right there, boys. You guys, I got a tournament on Baldridge uh, in a couple, no, not this Saturday, but in the following Saturday. Same day Scott's got his coming Great. out. And again, hey, all you big boaters, if you come into Baldridge, there's going to be an electric boat sitting on every point by the time you guys get there. I'm just letting you know. Do not uh, run over them. Do not run over me. Okay. Do not run over me. But you, I, I've caught on something you said right then. First 45 minutes of the day or the first hour. So you do that early. I do it early. So after that, let's say midday tournament, you got 18 pounds. You know it's going to take 20. You got to get a kicker. What are you throwing? Eighth ounce skip gap with a fluke stick on it. With a fluke stick. And I'm going to throw it 10 foot or less on rock, on main lake. During this time of the year? Yeah, right now. Okay. I just went yesterday and uh, cold caught two four and a halves and i call them blinkers they was you dial your stuff in you can actually see them and throw up there and they're gonna eat it did you notice since you fished yesterday with this warming trend and all this rain coming in it was cold the last couple of weeks correct frigid cold i mean yeah. there was ice on some lakes yeah um with this warming trend coming you think these fish are getting in the early pre-spawn mode I know on the Florida lakes and everything, they claim that, you know, you get a cold snap like that and then a warming thing, it just sets the fish into motion. 100%. Uh, these fish will start staging back up in these creeks. They may hold up in 20 foot, 15 foot, but they're getting in them areas that next month, in the next month, they're going to they're gonna be back there. Yeah. Now, once they get too far gone, paired up, I can't catch them. Uh, Once I, I start that. seeing them under the docks uh, in the very backs, you know, and they're paired up or three or four minutes just laying there, I'm sure there's a way to catch them fish. I, I I can't, so I don't mess with them. 
Okay. I try to catch them fresh ones coming in. That's going to be on the next wave. Okay. That may, okay. I, I get it. Um, fluke stick, any particular color, maybe not your juice, but if a guy was going to go out tomorrow and throw a fluke stick or even a fluke, like you were talking about on the, uh, fish head, any colors or certain uh, shapes fluke, better than others? Uh, fluke stick is just a, a, a Senko. Right. I like it. It's a little bit heavier than a Senko. Yeah. Uh, so I use it for Nico's proper word and I use it for my jig heads. Okay. Uh, some days with tails, some days without, if it's around a full moon, I'll leave the tails on them. Just, I think it looks more like something to crawfish, you know, and I'll paint the tail chartreuse or put a little red on it or any orange. Gotcha. Uh, you know, I, another way you can catch fish right now at Lanier and really have a, and be competitive. Uh, you can catch a 20, 22 pound bag is get out there in that timber, you know, and take a 3.3 Kitek or whatever you want to use, put it on a three H gumpy head, 10 pound line, drop it right down to the, you see them you two D you ain't got to have, uh, that's why we did it before we had it. Uh, you know, you have to dissect if that fish or is it really fish in the timber, but you can drop that thing to the bottom and, uh, just I call it old man shake. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to jiggle it like you're live scoping something. You just want to just, you're just rattling the bait. Just you're, enough to get I a mean, little just price. rattling it right and right. I call it mudding it. I want it right on the bottom. I don't want it loose line on the bottom, but I want it. You're not going to see it on live scope. You're not going to see the the fish on live scope down there. Uh, but in the timber, we're down on the bottom. You drop I mean, it through the timber yeah. down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to fish the top of it. You're going no, into the if timber. I, if I want to do it, I, I tell you, I just did that uh, article for GON coming out in uh, this month, February. Mm -hmm. And it absolutely, guys, you, you're wanting to catch fish. Uh, you want to know how to do it. Look at that. I, I, I burnt four good, probably uh, uh, other guys' holes too, but I, I absolutely took him – to four juice holes in the timber with that bait and caught fish and uh you can do it you don't have to have all the fancy stuff you you can catch them fish and once you find a place that's got one you'll catch two three four of them and they're liable to be three to five pounders uh do you find bigger fish in the timber do you find that like, when you catch fish out of the timber they're generally bigger correct you still can catch some little ones but uh, most of what you catch now is going to be over three pounds. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's some good juice right there. Um, I know I missed a bunch of questions, so you probably have to back it up. I did see somebody ask what color chatterbait you like to use. You know, it's just a, a pearl and a little bit of green back, kind of a heron color. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, like I say, I'll bite just a little bit off of a fluke stick. Uh, I mean, not a fluke stick, uh, the original fluke uh pearl and throw it on no chartreuse nothing fancy uh the only thing i do different uh is i'll tape one side of my blade and it don't really matter which one in gold tape i think it shows up a little better in the stained water because i'm not going to throw a chatterbait if it's not rained and it's green and it's clear water i'm just not going to do it interesting that is interesting you know this past summer <clears throat> when i was up here in lanier i was throwing the jackhammer in the I know you don't fish past Brown's Bridge or anything, but I piss—I fished way past there, up in those back creeks, mm -hmm. in some shallow water, and I was whacking them with the jackhammer during the summertime, yeah. and, and some good sized ones. Was you throwing more of a shad color though? Yeah, yeah, I was. Okay, yeah. What do you think about guys throwing like a, a fire crawl colored right now? Because if guys are throwing a rock crawler right now. A lot of guys are using the reds, the oranges. Mm -hmm. That's uh, fixing to be the color. It is. Yeah. Uh, Red Spring February. Time. So, yeah. we, so if you're going out in the next month and you're throwing, you know, your chatterbait, do you stay at that pearl and that white color, or do you do you change up to the reddish colors? I, I do not because I I'm not going to go throw a chatterbait. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to Oconee or somewhere, yeah, I'm gonna change up a color. Uh, at here at Lanier, it's not a bait that I'm gonna go throw all day long. And right. I, so I just keep it simple. The more simple I keep it, seem like the better I do. That makes sense. Paul, how would you fish winter time? Uh was it stain? Yeah. 
muddy water like we're dealing with now with all the rain. So I know, like, just take next week, you know, I'm going to be in Baldridge. But if you go behind the marina and up towards 400, if it had rain, like if I were fishing that tournament this Saturday, mm -hmm. it would be muddy. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you got muddy water right now. That's all you got. How would you approach muddy water? I'm hauling ass. Away from it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not with too. I'm not fishing fresh mud. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I got you. Clear water, clear water. Clear Is it water. I, a little stained? I don't care. That's what I want. You want but some stain. You I just don't, don't want to be able to walk no across. Red, orange, wintertime cold mud, fresh. I don't want it. Okay, that makes sense. They don't want it looking like Georgia red clay. No. Yeah, but it, it does happen. Yeah. Are more tournaments won on a near on a moving bait or a dragging bait? And let's just let's talk about right now. Not not in the past, but right now. Moving baits or dragging baits? And I assume he's talking about like your shaky heads, your jigs. I I may be wrong because these boys ain't going to tell me everything they do, but the guys that, you know, you take a meal and prints, they're, they're going to be in that pay line and they're going to be high. 100%. I see a meal doing these uh, videos, you know, dragging jigs around and stuff. I would be hard pressed to believe that they're not – they're not winning these tournaments and consistently without that. I, I'm just going to shoot you what I think. I think they're, <laughs> I think they're, they're, they're live scoping period bar none. Uh, are they going to pick a crankbait up in the mornings and throw it uh, around the bridge area uh, on some rock? Probably. Right. About like I'm going to run to the back of a Creek with something in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, they got their patterns. But That's after what that, I see them. Uh, and, they're usually over some patch of timber or going into a feeder creek of some kind. Yeah, so that's the biggest question that I get from guys that come in. They talk about, you know, Scott Barnes tournaments or if the BFL comes in, if you guys came in MPFL or whatever. They're like, there are guys that catch them consistently. These guys can catch 15, 16 pounds, and they're always wondering how those guys catch the 20-pound bag. The 20 some pounds. days I'm that guy wondering how I, the I, heck I know. they do that. But you, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned Prince and Emil. Hey, him, you got little Benson. Oh, that, listen, I coached him in football. He was my quarterback them, growing up. Them, them oh, guys buddy. are just amazing. He kid like, ain't no older than my daughter. He's and, out of hey, let me tell you something about Benson. We got a Oconee tournament. That kid's down there practicing for it, and it's a skeeter. Yeah. Uh I had a little deal figured out. Little Benson, Paul using the wrong color. Same bait. That kid drove all the way from Oconee to my house to give me the other color because I didn't have any. To give me the other color to end up and told me to cut my graphs off. Cut them off. Yeah. Never turn them on. Yeah. I did. That kid drove all the way up there for me to win that tournament. Yeah. I want it against him. Yeah. But that's the kind of kids I want to be friends with. You know why? It ain't because he, he helped me win. He, if he asked me tomorrow, hey, I'm broke down in Ohio. Come get me. You go Guess get what? Him. I'm going to go get him. I think that, that I, I yeah. like kids that's 100%. Not all about their sales. 100%. Sam, his dad, me and Sam are good yep. buddies. And I coached, I coached, but he was my quarterback after my son graduated. I dropped back down and coached him coming up. He has seen the devil in me because he was the quarterback. So it didn't matter what any other kids did. It was, you know, I had to fuss at somebody. And I always, you always fuss at the quarterback because they're, the, you know, but I think the absolute world of that fan, they're yeah. good people. Yeah. And you watch, yeah, they're great people. They're good daddy people. too. But you watch Emil, uh, Lil Paul. Yeah. Uh, Buddy Benson. Yeah. They're all fishing Toyota this year. Yeah. They may stumble here or there, but consistently when it's said and done, it was it was what they want to yeah they want to do it well when emil won that uh bfl all american or whatever it was in hartwell to do the red crest he beat out matt mcconnell and buddy yeah. they were all kind of neck and neck through that so yeah they're good people so buddy if you're watching i'm talking good about you yeah <laughs> so yeah he actually came up here and seen me a while ago it's funny when the kids you coach when they're eight nine ten years old now right. they grow up mm -hmm. they look in you right of course everybody looks me now i'm short but yeah it's he's a hell of an angler. 
but good people. That's the thing too. We're missing a lot in the fishing world these days. A lot of people. Hey, you're only as good as your word. You're, that's all you are. There you go. There you go. Like that. So uh, let's say he is dropping some knowledge. Listen up youngsters. You can learn a few things. And I'm, I'm actually very pleased with that. Cause, and I'm going to be honest with you because tonight's the first night you and I ever met. That's correct. You walked in and I was like, and I was telling Tim before the show, and I told other guys, I said, you know, I've never met Paul. And people said he'd never come on here and talk. And I'm like, I don't know what to expect, but so far you, you've been as good as anybody we've ever well, had on here. Hey, it was hey our numbers are numbers. through the roof right now. I'm sitting there watching these numbers, and this is probably the most attentive audience we've had. And I don't 100%. Know I wanted to puke coming over here. I know. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I know. You're that nervous? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the guy that sits in the park. I get there early. I sit in the parking lot. I sit in my boat, let whoever I'm fishing with go weigh the fish. It's not because I don't like people. I I do. I just, uh, I I'm you, me. I heard you's a hard ass. I am. No, hell no. I'll tell somebody I whooped their ass in a minute. I don't put up with nothing. Well, there's a difference. Yeah, at Randy Dover. Yeah, well, you know, Randy, <laughs> Randy made a comment earlier. He's actually on here watching. So, Randy, he actually Randy, told really, me. really, I give him hell, but he's a good guy. Randy, he actually told me, Paul said you would come on my show and talk. So, Paul said you had to do it, right? That's right. So, it's not that bad, is it? It's not bad coming on here. I tried to tell you, it's just like a, the way we want this show to be is just like guys sitting around a campfire just talking. And so I think you're doing absolutely exactly. Great. Ignore the cameras and just sit around and shoot the breeze. Yeah. So how uh Clint Bartlett wants to know how heavy of a weight are you throwing in that old uh Nico rig? One sixteenth, uh nine percent of the time. Does it make that big of a difference? It does. Though? It does. It does to me. Uh them, Why? them 40 foot fish uh at Clark Keel I was throwing on this weekend. Yeah. I bought, I wasn't get. it's taken forever to get down to them. But when they was glued to the bottom of that cold so hard that I wasn't even sure if they was fish, but it was a hard spot. I'd see what I call that little pimple and stare at it long enough. And I, I'd make myself believe it moved. So right. I'd throw it and it'd take forever to get down there. But what happened was I went to, they would, they rise up. When it got close, they'd show themselves. And usually it wasn't just one. It was five, six, seven. And you knew as soon as it hit and you popped it one time, it was going to eat it. I went to a, don't hit, don't get me wrong. I don't know weight's good, but a 330 seconds, I believe. I went to one that was probably a quarter more heavy stuffed in there. It falls so fast. I could, I couldn't get bit on it. And it wasn't falling that much faster, but it's falling fast Just enough. that difference. I way. could not catch them on it. So I've got nothing but one sixteenth in my boat, and that's what I'm going to catch them on. You use the screw-in kind? No, I do not. I use a poke. I poke them in. So I just tell you how bad I suck. I, was, I didn't know those screw-in kind. Of, I was just poking them in, mm -hmm. and I was stoned, and I'd throw that wacky rig like that, and all of a sudden I'd, I'd hear, boom, my damn weight you know, was flying off. <laughs> Fishing docks, uh, people fishing without weights and stuff, they hook them right in the middle. Uh, I don't fish them on docks very little. Uh, I fish them open water, uh, floater fish or fish that's right on the bottom. I hook it. You know, they got a little egg sack looking thing yep. on them. I'll always put my little clear rubber band is what I use. They come out with some new stuff I want to try, but I'll hook it to the top of that egg sack so it's, when it hits, it more stands up. It falls faster. You're not hooked in the middle. It falls head first. Uh, and when it sits, I believe it, it heads down, you know, and it, when you bump it, the tail's sticking up more. Almost like a shaky head yeah. kind of at that point. Correct. But you do throw you throw the bands. I do. I throw the clear band. All right, let me ask you this. When I started throwing a wacky rig, I felt like at the beginning I was using too big of a hook. Mm -hmm. So I got to where I use a very small hook. I use I use a one out. One out. That mm -hmm. was my question. So I do. You, you do use a I small use a one out every once in a while. Uh, it'll get. I'll I'll lose a fish and I'll reel it in. The hook's turned into the worm. That's why a lot of people do not use the band. The worms' weights cost so much. Yeah. That I'm gonna use the band get more out of it. Where if I just hook the worm, skin hook it. I'm going to catch that one fish and it's gone. Okay. If I was fishing a big, big money tournament, 
you know, a hundred thousand, like he's going to get the fish for, I probably wouldn't use the band because I do lose some fish because that one out will turn and get wrapped around that worm and you're just not going to get the hook in them good. Yeah, I don't like using the band unless I'm really casting yeah. a long way. Yeah, I agree with that too. I can't stand using that band. I've lost more fish using Well, you the see band. that new yeah. thing they're yeah. making where it, it actually sticks through the worm and you hook that little piece that's sticking through that worm. Uh, they're hard to find right now, but they just come out. And that's going to be the deal I think I'm going to start using. One thing, you're not going to sling your worm off. Yes. If they ever short strike you, you set the pull back into them. It's not going to, you're going to come back with a rubber band. That happens a lot. Yeah. Well, with that, you're not going to. What's your Cinco? Uh, you zoom on everything? I, I, I pretty much always zoom. Uh, and I, I use other things. Whatever it takes to, to I win. Think yeah. right. I'm going to use it. Uh, that fluke stick, it's hard to beat. You got me. I'm thinking about going out and buying some because I use Yamamoto's. Yeah. The only problem about Yamamoto's is after five casts. And and, 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 and they're, they're so expensive. expensive. It's green pumpkin. They are. It, it, it's it's a little bit more hardier. It's a little heavier, but green pumpkin, green pumpkin, purple, green pumpkin, it don't matter. If it's green pumpkin, them fish couldn't care. So you don't throw any shad colors? Every once in a while, I'll, uh, it'd have to be summertime. Summertime, you might go to shad. Yeah, but the rest of the time, on top of the brush wanting something, and I, I can't catch them on a moving bait over top, Yeah, I'll throw a, a shad color or a, a pinkish color. Just okay. to let it fall down and to get their attention. Uh, okay, that makes sense because I, I found and and do you throw the wacky a lot here and there? I mean during during spawning time, so during pre-spawn and spawn and post-spawn, I'll throw that. Now you throw more of the green pumpkin colors. I like watermelon red. Watermelon red, but still got a little bit of green in it. Like yeah. That. So what I found in the spring, watermelon red dominant. Mm-hmm. You heard that, guys, right there. In the spring, watermelon red is dominant. Paul said so. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. That's yeah. juice. That is juice. What do you call it? That's not sugar-free juice. That is not sugar-free juice. That is straight juice. That's right straight there. juice right Take there. notes. So, but here's something I found on Lanier, and maybe it's just me think overthinking it, that with spotted bass, I like throwing shad colors on my wacky. Like if I'm skipping under a dock letting it sink, when I fish a largemouth lake, I throw more of the green pumpkin kind of colors because I think it resembles brim a little bit more. So what you're telling me is that I probably can throw that green pumpkin, green pumpkin blue, something like that year-round, spots, largemouth, it doesn't matter. Correct. I put a little bit of chartreuse on the tail, very little. Okay. Uh, just to maybe like make it look like a brim or something. Just to, a spot of bass, just like chartreuse. Yeah, that, I have found that. I ain't true. dipping it. I'm not making it a bright chartreuse, but I'm going to take a stick. And wipe a little bit on it. Just a little. Yeah. You don't go crazy with it. No. So like those Cinco's that you see that are green uh, pumpkin all the way to that bright yellow. Use. You don't use it. No. Nope. Just enough. Just do, you, do you use scents? Like garlic? And cry, you know. I am going to take my baits. And either I'm going to flukes. I'm going to boil them uh, to make them more pliable. Boil them. Swim straight. Yep. yep, I heard you, about that. You boil your, yeah, boil, you boil your bait. You get them softer. Yeah, get some softer, more. Yeah, and then get a, a heron. If your fluke is not running dead straight, if you ain't hooking it where you can feed burn it, and it run dead straight, you're only going to catch maybe twenty percent of what you could be catching on Lake Lanier. You boil your flukes too. Yeah, you boil your flukes. I don't boil my uh, fluke sticks. I boil just your super flukes. Fluke. Super flukes. Mm -hmm. You boil them. Yeah. How long? Because I've never heard anybody talk it about boiling a couple, a couple minutes. minutes. Yeah. Do you add salt? No, I don't add salt. But every bag, when I put them up, them flute sticks or whatever I'm using, other than a, a flute, you're burning it so fast, I don't think a scent helps whatsoever. Got a question out there. How long do you boil them for? You said three or four minutes? T two or three minutes. It ain't so that long. you got your water in a rolling boil, and you drop mm -hmm. them in. You drop them in. And that makes them more pliable and some swim better. Yeah. You know how you take them out of the bag sometimes and the tail be just a little bit off or something, and you hook it and it just won't swim straight. That, that'll that help them swim straight. Well, there you go. There's but some more juice right that, there. If the fluke is not running dead straight, they're not, on, especially on a heron spawn, they're not going to eat it. At what time of the year do you start throwing flukes? All summer at night tournaments and all shad spawn. 
Okay. Summer. I, th- I will have a flute tied on. At night? Yes. During the summer? Yeah. Really? Yeah, any kind of any kind of street light, you know. People, throwing it at the lights. No, okay. well, there, a lot of people throw them just at dock lights. They throw know. it at them green lights. It can that. be a street light. It can be a light on the front of the dock that's a walkway light. Just anything that. It'll it'll hold the fish. Okay, that makes sense. Now let me ask you this: You talk, you you've mentioned several times. Uh, we got a question. I'll make sure you lay them straight after boil. Answer your scent question. Yes, yeah, scent. Could you use it? Every bag I have, I uh, doctor them up. Uh, smelly jelly. Smelly jelly. I want some sparkle in it and a smelly jelly. I, I, that's what I use. What does smelly jelly smell like? Like ass. <laughs> Yum yum. Fish yum yum. Yum yum. Fish yum, yum. yum has made it to yum, this podcast. Yum, made it to the podcast. No, that's just garlic and stuff. It? I've always I've always wondered that question. You might have heard me ask it. There ain't nothing in the damn water smells like garlic. Hmm. Why in the hell? At some point somebody said there's always a first for everything. I'm gonna add garlic to my worms. Hmm? What was that guy? Was that thinking? VM, the first one to come out. Somebody with a with garlic scent, you open it, it gagged you. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I haven't been able to smell since COVID, the first round of COVID. I've been going on two years now. But you open up garlic, and I can catch that for about, I don't know, half a second before it goes away. But still, I get I get smelling like shad, smelling like crawfish, smelling like whatever. But I've seen coffee scent, garlic scent. And I'm just like, somebody said, that's a damn good idea, garlic. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta Where did the to coffee so, come from? I mean, who who thought, well, I'm going to dip my lure in It was coffee. probably me after a long Friday night, you know. <laughs> so when, like, you go back to boiling your flukes, sometimes I boil my Senkos to make them soft. And what I do when I boil the water, I add tons and tons of salt. Yeah. Tons and tons of salt. And the, the, the juice that I use is I make my own juice, my own garlic. So I, I take just minced garlic, get a pan, get that boiling with a lot of butter. Then I drain the it, Italian? and then I drain it into the bag, and then I smush it with that. And mm-hmm. that butter and that garlic sits on that salt so much better. It works. It's a little trick. I'd be sitting there having that worm in my mouth, sucking that butter yeah. and gone. <laughs> it sounds like I, a really good dinner. It does sound like good, you know, yeah. noodles right there. But I've always, often, seriously, and in, in, in all seriousness, I know we're having fun with it. I've often wondered why garlic. Is it just because it's that strong, or is it something they taste that they appeal to them? Just it makes no sense to me. I feel like it. They, they, it, they hold on to the bait longer, just because it's something different. Just something different, juicy. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> he makes his own juice. These got a little bite to it. Just write them. I think the whole scent thing. I think Rob dried it. Just makes them like when they grab it for a few seconds. They're still trying to figure out what it is. Long enough you just stick them. Yeah, old oh, Kim for five straight weeks of yum yum tips. That's right. So how does it taste? I, I just that's the whole thing. Uh, he did that salt movement too well. I don't know what you did, but guys are picking up on how you did that salt. Did you do the like the, the Italian? You ain't Italian, oh, are you? We need to see that. Oh, that oh, cool. Yeah, okay. salt shake. Let's make that. sure I got that. That looks camera. like on Pornhub right there. So, oh. we ain't embarrassing you yet, are we? No, <laughs> you ain't gonna embarrass so me. Speaking about porn, Paul, I wanted to ask you this question. Uh, oh, well, we all right, then. Do you believe in the reverse spawn? Is that like the cowgirl? No, the reverse spawn. Do you believe? Okay, so do you, like, I have no idea. Your spawning times of the year yeah. are like late February, March, April, yeah. maybe beginning of May. Yeah. Now, in Okeechobee, I found this out that fish start spawning right when that first cold snap happens. That water temperature drops at a specific temperature, and the fish start spawning early. And then when it starts getting cold, they kind of push off. I've noticed here in in these Georgia lakes, like Notley, Lanier, I've fish during the, the beginning of the fall towards the middle and that temperature drops, I've seen them pushed up. I've seen them spawn. You talk about I like, call that like, a reverse spawn because like, they shouldn't be spawning that early, but now I've seen it. Earliest I've ever, ever seen them spawn to mount to anything is the middle of March here. Really? Mm-hmm. Middle of March. What's the latest? Because Ryan can, and I, was, well, you can you can go up the up the river, up towards Laurel Park, Gainesville, the Laurel Park area, and they'll sp- and I'm sure they spawn later. Like I said, I don't fish up there a lot, right? But Kevin Stowers, he he loves to fish up there, and he took me up there before in uh, middle of May, and and still be plenty of bedding fish around. 
I just think most of your big ones yeah. are going to be the end of March, the very first of April. Gotcha. We got guys worrying about you because they think you need a cigarette about right now. No. You I'm ain't good. fainting. <laughs> so you, you think like the bigger fit, I think, I think that as well. I think bigger fish spawn first thing. And first that's thing. It. First thing. You don't, you're not going to get a lot of the bigger fish towards the tail end. Nope. They're done. They're done. Yeah. I've heard that. But now last year, Ryan and I saw them on the bed south, south of the lake in like late. La last June. year was screwed up. It was screwed it up. It got so hot in March for about two weeks that everybody, I mean, it went from people ditch fishing and timber fishing and out there fishing road beds to all of a sudden it got so hot for two weeks that the whole internet lit up with the very back of creeks. I mean, you couldn't find a place to get in. Right. Uh, and it, it just, and then it just went stupid last year. It was really no rhyme or reason. And, and I love the bed fish, but I'm uh, a lot more people smarter about it than I am. Well, I, I understand that. Pull up uh, Christopher Brown. And I've heard of guys using WD-40 as a scent attractant. Actually, if you look on the can of WD-40, even right now to this day, it says fish attractant on it. What do you think that's for? Just the oil? What will Harkin say? Oh, heck, Will. They'll pair up in October, November on Notley. Won't actually spawn, but go through the process. That is 100% true. That's I've true. Seen, that's, that's, yeah, because me and him witnessed that. That's he told reverse, me randomly. Spawn, you yeah, and we're like, "Are you, did you see what I was seeing?" And he's like, yeah. "Yeah, dude. There's seven pounders and three pounders moving up." So they're up there. They're just they're up there doing the deed, but they ain't finishing the task. I guess. Oh. I, I, but I, I've I've seen it, and and Will's no dummy. Maybe more no, of a courting. Actually, he was, they're just he doing a court show. I, I enjoy uh, it WD forty. Before they was that comment. the oh. first scent, I guess that I seen that really was anything to it was Jack's juice. Yeah. Uh, and before that, man, I, we sprayed WD-40 about every other cast. Yeah, it still says it. Like, you can go buy a can right now, and it says fish attractive. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But, I mean. And I think it's because it just gives off that film. Uh, yeah. Just that oil. Something different. Something different. Uh, Spray some of that in your mouth, see how it tastes right there. <laughs> um, with coffee. One of the Strike King lure designers poured his coffee in the water before a tournament and noticed fish eating on the coffee grounds, and he tried it on Strike King baits. Okay, well, at least with that, there's a rhyme or reason. You know, he saw it. I think I want to try it. I still don't get the garlic. So that, that's that's an interesting well, comment. Probably the bait fish started going up there to eat the, the little wee bait fish to eat the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fish just showed up. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I've caught brim. Like, I've ran out of crickets, brim fish, and I pulled out some chewing tobacco. <coughs> but I've seriously put a little string of chewing tobacco on it. thought they think it's something. They'll eat anything. Have you noticed the quality of the spots up at Lanier has improved significantly over the last few years? Yeah, 100%. What do you attribute I, that to? I can't tell you. Uh, I used to say – the spots in there got big uh, because we had the trout, you know, and they'd feed on them trout, and it's so much. And they're gone now. Yeah, they're gone, so you can't you can't say that anymore. I I believe more people fishing out there. I, I believe a lot of them spots live in the timber year round. I don't believe they ever go to the bank. I, I believe if some of them spawn in the top of trees. Yeah, I, I may be dead wrong. I know they do at Russell, uh, spawn in them treetops. Uh, I just believe live scope has helped a lot, but you still We're catching catch. fish that we never would yeah. have caught. Uh, this time of the year, I never before would have been throwing in five to eight foot of water, right? After this hard cold front, yeah, it but just, they're up there. They never, some of them never leave. Ryan always said that there are fish that live shallow year round. They're One, fish that live deep year round, and no, there's something that go back and forth. I believe that. Yes. So if you're a worm chunker or a jig guy, you and, and that tournament, they were casting at the bank, and it was windy and cold as all get go last Saturday. It just dragging. And most of those fish from the guys I talked to were caught in 15 foot or less. And the water temperature was 47, 48 where they were fishing. So, but then there are those, like you said, they'll stay down 40, 50 feet year round. I do. I believe it. I, I don't know what uh, – Lanier's got a lot of bait in it compared – you go to you go to Clark Hill, been down there for five or six weeks – I mean, five or six times, and they got near the bait, near the bait. Right. 
uh, a lot of these lakes don't. Lanier has a lot of food source. That's why I think Lanier is the crown jewel of spotted bass. I mean, you fish some lakes. Um, you fished, and I know you fished a bunch, but like over the last few years, you fished quite a few baits. How would Lanier rank as far as like what he's saying, the bait that you see on your sonars and on, you know, oh, there's, there's bait everywhere. I mean, Lanier is the, the, the number one lake in this state, hands down for spots, probably in the world. I mean, it's just insane what's out there. Like you can, there's so many fish out there. Like it doesn't like sometimes, yeah, the pressure happens, but there's so many fish out there. They probably have never, there's fish out there. They've probably never seen a lure before. Yeah. Because there's so many out there. So many of them. I saw he's scrolling through because good Lord guys, there's a ton yeah, of comments. Now. You can't keep up with all of them, but I did see one. Uh, by the live. Uh, pull that one up real quick. Uh, we're going to do that on air. In all seriousness, hey, I'll make, I'll make Vern come up here. Since buy a idea, live we'll shad one day, and you'll probably understand the garlic scent. It's weird. Okay. Yeah, hey, I'll trust him. Buy the live shad, and I'll understand. Okay, so that's – hey, Tim, put that down on the list. Oh, uh, JP, Vern, he fishes with me. I'll make him do it. Okay, because I'm wondering, is it thread fin or blue back, or does it matter what kind? Yeah, uh, clarify. Also, also, I saw a comment. And we're going to get to that one at the top. Before we get to that, Trent Gober, somebody asked me uh, in the comments, do you nose hook your fluke? How do you rig your fluke? Uh, I Personally, I use a 5 uh off-shank Gamagatsu hook, and I will barely, barely skin hook the nose with my tip of my hook and then run it, slam through its back to where the point lays. The It's laying perfectly flat. If you take the fluke and hook the whole nose of a zoom fluke, the hook through the, the whole nose part of it to where it's laying in that offset, you'll never get it to run straight. But if you just take it and kind of just barely hook the nose, barely, now it's going to, the first fish you catch, it's coming off. It's going to rip the, the front of it because you're just barely hooking it. And you get that hook, that the fluke to lay straight on that hook. I see some people, they can use weighted hooks and some regular J style hooks and make them run straight. I personally just use a five out Gamagatsu just offset barely. hook. And barely, I mean, take the point and barely stick it in the nose of it. Let me tell you why I love this show because I actually pay attention to our guests every time they come on because I'm always trying to learn something. I have never been able to get a fluke to run what I think is proper. Mm. You but I do that. If you can't reel that fluke, throw it out there and reel it, just holding the rod straight, and it run perfectly. I mean, reel it fast, and it run perfectly straight under the water. These herring lakes, you're going to catch 30% of what you should be catching. That makes sense because I – A heron runs as straight and as fast as you can possibly see. Because I'm one of those that take that hook, I go all the way through, like you said, and then come up and do what you said. I've got too much of the nose. It's too much on the hook. It's just going to – Too much on the hook. Spin and wiggle and just – It won't. It pisses straight. me off, and that's what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. See, I learned stuff. So that's why I, I love this right there. I mean, little bitty, everything about fishing is in the details. Little bitty details like that can make a break. And like I think this is not stuff, you know, I feel like some of my friends are going to be mad at me. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in saying that, I didn't learn that on my own. I had somebody tell me that, show me that. Right. So if, if I can help somebody. You know, hey, I'm so maybe crazy. six people come to my funeral. Hey, I'll be, I'll be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be there, but I and I hope it ain't for a long time. Yeah. I want to be like ninety when when you. Yeah, I still want to be in the pay line at seventy five. That will be impressive. You'll be like your own Rick Clun or That's whatever. Right. Yeah, dude. Hey, hell yeah, with that guy, he's got a young wife too, don't he? I'm gonna keep mine. You keep yours. My, mine's trained. She's good. Trained? Yep, and she's good to me. Trained? She's trained. Do you know what would well, happen I, to me if I went home and told my wife she was trained? No, you, they got to know you, know your quirks. And she'll throat punch me now. <laughs> I, I love don't it. Don't get out of line. I absolutely love it. So, uh, okay, do you put the flukes back in the original bag after boiling them? Yes. Boil them, stick them back in the bag. Mm -hmm. I can't do it like them women at Zoom. That's no, the neatest thing you ever seen. They, they, they're good. I, you, I can't put three of them in there at one time and them lay straight. I tried but to they do take it. the whole wad, stick them right in there, and 
never never be messed up. It's a talent. It's a talent. It's a talent. It's absolute talent. What's he drinking too much back there? This is like his second or third trip back there, right? So, guys, I read a, a recent study. Um, my wife actually sent this to me. Uh, recent studies show that 98% of the women that you're with like when their man is fishing or hunting because it gives them the, gives them more time to clean. So is that like, what yeah. Is? yeah, I bet. Okay, yeah. put that camera. Hey, Rob, if you it's need like, a place to like hang out tonight, tonight. Yeah. 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 yeah, put that. Camera. Oh, she's not hearing. She's oh, okay. Hey, you're okay. safe. Opinions no, yeah. expressed on the Fish North Georgia Live well are not necessarily the opinions of the host and or Tim running the board. Right. You understand that. So you women out there who heard that you got more time to clean, that is all on Rob. <laughs> That is not ninety eight percent. Ninety eight percent. That's a high percentage. percent. <laughs> Have you ever seen the? Uh, and you ladies back there, please don't slap me for saying this. Have you ever seen the picture of God looking down on man and 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 going, "Why are you guys messing with the dishwasher? I designed it right the first time." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the joke the joke around my house is uh oh god you know that people tell me you're going to hell and I say. So what? I I'm not scared. Yeah, white scared, dude. I've been I got a deal worked. I've been married to his sister for 39 years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Listen, I love oh, my dear. wife Amanda. I love you. You're the sweetest thing in the world. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, Lord, I know it. You know what my wife does? I go fish a tournament, and she's like, I come home after eight hours, and I'm exhausted. I fish hard. I suck, but I fish hard. So I'll lay down on the couch and I'll fall asleep. And she's like, "Oh, you just been fishing. Yeah, you just been fishing." And and she will take a damn sharpie and she will color my fingernails and she'll draw tattoos on my neck and stuff yeah. like that. I'll wake up and she'll put them in places that you guys can see that I can't see. She's evil. She's evil. Like if you married to Satan's sister, I got his niece at yeah. home. I get it. All right, I get it. So. um Let's see. Let's well, Wes see. is in trouble. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I like that <laughs> marriage. Scott Barnes knows his wife works with my wife. So, <laughs> listen. Hey, y'all are the number one cause of divorce. Fishing is the number one cause. First five years of marriage, I thought loading the dishwasher meant getting my wife drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, uh, Vern, if you need somewhere to stay, man. Yeah, get we hey, listen, we can all sleep here tonight. Um, Michael Temples has this question, but he also had one earlier. So this is a two-part question for you. I know you're old, but you got to do two of them, right? Okay. Here, okay. All right. So his first question was, how are you approaching the pre-spawn right now? I believe that's what it was, Michael. And right now he goes, what's the biggest tournament that Paul has won and the best memories from it? Good question. Well, let's see. I suck at BFLs. I can't win one of them. Save my life. Uh, they got my number. Uh, Biggest thing I've won is uh, Skeeter, H&Ds. Uh, I was a second-place man uh, for a lot of years in H&D, and I finally won one, and they, I, I won three or four of them. Uh, Skeeter's probably the hardest thing I've ever tried to win. Uh, I, don't, I don't fish uh, – I don't fish any big, big tournaments. Uh, pr pretty much stay around state where I know I can. I think I can compete. Right. I got you. I got you. Pre-spawn, real quick. How are you approaching it? I'm not yet. Uh, when do you think that kicks in? For for me, when I start targeting fish, moving up will be the middle of next month. Uh, in saying that. There's some already. I think they live pretty much in that area. So, like he was saying, marinas, I'm 100% with him on that. Mm. Them fish live there. They never leave. I made a living winning, uh, just winning a lot of tournaments before all the electronics come out. And I, I camped in marinas from the start to the finish. Uh, I still will go to a marina to this day if I'm having a bad day because them fish live there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask this. Um, let me get a serious question real quick. James Kinder wants to know, take Lanier out of the question. Uh, what's your next favorite lake? You don't get to fish Lanier. What lake are you going to? Your next Chatug, favorite. Uh, That's what Kaz Anderson said earlier. Chatug. Fish is a lot like Lanier, right? Identical to me uh, is take the timber out. Take the timber out. but it's Now fish. they got grass in it. and that. I don't 
I don't care for that. Right. I'm not a grass guy. But you, you put me at Okeechobee. Oh, I love grass. You put me at Okeechobee or somewhere, I'm going to finish dead last. And you should do good. <laughs> you, you grew up, you, you cut your teeth on that. Now, since we've been going quite a while in this show, I kind of held off to this. But Cole, pull up the Cole. Going up a couple. He had a question. Uh, oh, it's Clayton. All right, let me ask you this question, first of all. Ask him about the boat he was supposed to win but got called for a dead fish. Uh, an H&D, uh, two-day. I led the uh, first day. It was right there close to the lead, best of my knowledge. Uh, it was winter time. It was about this time of the year. Pulled up, weighed the fish. The the fish was all alive. It was a boat pull through way in. I put them in the bag. My partner took them up there. And some guy, loved him to death, Perry Murphy, stuck his big-ass finger down his throat. And because it didn't clamp down on his finger, he called it dead. Really? Uh, said that a fish throat muscles, if it ain't dead, well, long story short, I won a ten thousand dollar boat instead of a thirty thousand dollar boat, and I lost by two one hundredths of an ounce because of that dead penalty. Me and Perry's friends, Perry would bend over backwards for me. Still, this day, I feel he was wrong. Yeah. Uh, but he was the, doing the fish weigh in, and uh, he was the guy and you just got to respect it and move on well uh, here's my damn and question. he's big i'd hate to hate I'll, to get into I'll it how big of your damn hands gotta be to dude his, his fingers as big around as my forearm I was about to say, he killed the fish that's a long damn way he killed the fish <laughs> then it's his fault well it's, a, it's over now but yeah I mean, <laughs> the listen, fish was cold he wasn't i mean moving. listen how far how big do your hands have to be think of a bass to actually just stick your head in there and, and gag a fish to death the gag reflex didn't work. Is what he's saying. Mm -mm, that know. sounds like a bunch he's, of BS. He's a good guy. All right, but so it fish was probably all obviously fish might have died in that three seconds. It went from my boat to the. But it possible. was live. When, yeah, it, I get that. I get that. So uh, I love you, Perry. He loves you, Perry. <laughs> if you're watching, Perry, I love you too. And God, Lord's don't get near my wife with fingers like that. Yeah, Mister Paul, how do you feel about a Carolina rig? It's a great old school way to catch fish. I hate it, but I know it works. And I want you to answer that question, too. So how do you think about Carolina rig? Me, personally, you can take it, an Alabama rig, and a spinnerbait. I know where and, this is going. And leave them at the house. You don't uh, like it. If you can catch them on a Carolina rig. Now, I don't know about these shallow, shallow lakes because I'm just not that guy. Uh, I'm going to wear your butt out with a jig head, 8,000 jig head. Okay, what about you, Carolina rig? I like Carolina rigging in specific lakes, not Lanier. What what lake would you be Carolina rigging? Um, Harris Chain is a good Carolina rig lake. Um, I've caught some fish over at Notley, Carolina rigging. Um, caught some fish in Hartwell, Carolina rigging. Okay, yeah. I, I hate it. So, that's because my wife is the best because she fishes too. Hey, I got you. There you go. All right, so I'm going to give you two serious questions, and then I'm going to end on the question I want to answer. So, um, one is, Paul, have you ever fished Lake Burton? Yes, one time. Uh, fished a New Year's tournament because back in the day, Lanier didn't have any, uh, maybe once every three months did we have a tournament here. And uh, I went up there and fished the New Year's, had a big spot, big largemouth, didn't know anything about the lake, never seen it. Caught a 6-2 spot and thought I was going to get something, and I was fourth biggest spot, so I've never went back. Okay. Would you rather fish saltwater or freshwater? If I live three hours closer to the ocean, I would not own a bass boat. You like it? I, that's what I, pull, I pulled up your Facebook page to get a picture of you, and I had to text you, and like, is there any bass pictures on you? You had all saltwater. No, nope, my, uh, my family all loves it. I love it. Uh, of course, any tournament down there I want to get in, uh, just from competitive. If Paul fishes a tournament on Hartwell tomorrow, what bait is he going to bring fishing? And uh, what's your go-to baits on Hartwell? Uh, this time of year, Hartwell's just like Lanier. I'm going to find me a creek to start off the morning with that's got a feeder in it where it's got a little bit of stain. I'm going to throw a, uh, some kind of 3.3 size bait on, on a, 
a fish head, whatever you want to throw, but I'm going to uh, pump it like a worm on the bottom. I'm not going to just straight reel it uh, back to the boat. And okay. then, I, then I'm going to go out and throw a eighth ounce Senko or Nico rig is what I'm going to do. Okay. Final question of the night for you. How do you stay warm in cold weather? All the kids have gone to bed by now. I <laughs> Say it like you want to say it. I take two Viagra or Cialis last longer in the mornings before I go. Uh, sit in the truck, drink Red Bulls, activate it good, keeps my blood pumping. Uh, my partner ain't pretty, so we don't have no effects. Uh, and if I get uh, somebody in the boat that's hollering cold, then I call my little girl and tell them I got built in hand warmer, stick her hands there. You said that in a much plotter way than I thought that, you might. I didn't want to lose your. Uh, you ain't going to lose nothing. I ain't got nothing but daggum heathens like me watching watching like that. So, all right. So, real quick. So, I want I want to make sure I hit you guys. So, next week uh, for Rob here and Will Harkins and several of the guys um, that have, have been on recently, the MPFL is on Logan Martin, right? Now, where can you watch it? Uh, you can watch it on Fix TV. That's um, P-H-Y-X. And then I think the first day one, um, they're going to allow the first couple of hours. I think it's going to be on Facebook and the MPFL uh, website. And then I, if I'm not mistaken, they're going to have three bonus cams for day one. And then obviously when it goes to day two, day three, those are going to be live coverage. So the top five and day, day two and day three will have a camera and then there'll be three extra bonus cams. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So the cool thing about doing this show is we get to meet people like Rob and all that. Now we know where we can follow them. Will Harkins that was on a couple of a uh, couple of episodes ago, young kid. He was actually second in Angler of the Year last year. Yeah, a lot of seconds. A lot of seconds. So we're gonna get to get to see that. So you guys, hey, listen, when the NPFL is on, you guys follow Rob, follow Will. Uh, quite a few others in the local area that are fishing it. So that's gonna be really cool. Support your NPFL because I like that league because it's got a lot of guys like us now mr paul i want to tell you number one it has been a privilege and an honor to have you up i know i said hey, living I, legend. I gotta say something real quick you say I, whatever you I want i forgot about it uh he didn't want me to do it but i, I gotta do it do it uh, Go ahead. everybody if hey if y'all right before tournament time at night you're always looking and i know i got that bait i know i got that bait and you can't find it Hey, Greg Holly has got the biggest bait store in his basement that you'd ever want to – anything you might need. Greg Holly's uh, got it. Oh, buddy. Them Finn twins and them, he literally – he's got a small hammond. So do I need to call him to stop my store? If you need something. Dude, Greg Holly's got and, it. Hey, and he'll bend – that that guy will help me do anything I need. That's good. Uh, That's good. You I have do to the same that. for him. Another thing, hey, I want to plug myself. I got an OnlyFans page. I sell feet oh. pictures. Leave shit. Sell feet pictures. You gotta be kidding. No, I do. What's what's the, the what's, link? I want to check that link? out. Yeah. How can we get how can how, we how do I subscribe? It, it's uh at eugenesfeet.com. Eugenesfeet.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Dude, you, you heard it here, folks. You gotta have a side gig. I watch a meal and all them boys. They got them things. They got an only fans? Dude, that's the that's how they afford to do this. I don't even know what the I hell to say. You heard a meal last week or when he was on here talking about you got to donate. You got to get your brains beat in. Well, he could afford to do that. You think I can make some money with my feet? Dude, there's women out there that will pay anything. To see now, my feet. Dude, I'm telling you, I got the worst looking feet. You, My my friends, please put don't wear flip-flops. I got a white toenail and a black toenail on both feet. They're, they're in calluses. I mean, it's bad. But, they, hey. How do you know it's women watching it? I don't know that. I don't care. You don't care. As long as, long as they say four ninety nine. As long as they subscribe and play. Yeah. They don't care like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Four ninety nine. Okay. Well, guys, there you go. Make sure you go to uh, OnlyFans to see Paul's oh, feet. Don't blame me for whatever you see there. It That's is great. not me. Uh, he's got corn chips as big as uh, toenails. Now, the OnlyFans. Stacy Martin Mullins. Only fans. Hey, listen, I thought about doing that, putting my feet on there. I just need like an extra. Yeah, have, everybody's got to have a side gig. Let's do a calendar. Like, could we do a calendar where like we get the top anglers from late? No, I'm all in. Hey, like, if I dress you up in a bikini with a thong, I can be that old dude. You'll wear a thong for no, me. I'm not scared. What you got a squirrel in the front? <laughs> dude, I got. <laughs>
I ain't even going there. You ain't never seen them guys jack. I was down at Fort Lauderdale one time, and the old man was about 70, 75. He's jogging down the – he's jogging right along the beach, and then he's in a thong. And I'm like, my God. It looked like a small squirrel in the front of that guy's thong. Dude, you have- It was like I didn't know what to do. But you know what? The funny thing is that you couldn't stop staring at it. No, I couldn't. Right. I was like, <laughs> seriously. It was like right. it was my one gay moment. That's one reason I don't do good in BFLs because you got a partner you don't know. You just don't know them. They don't know you. And when you're my age and it's cold and it's winter, yeah, dude, I had to drop my all my stuff all the way to my ankles to drop take a deuce. my thumb, stick it in the back so I, it'll poke out enough to piss so I don't piss all over my knees and all over the side of the boat. It's, it's bad. That's and, why. I'm, and you're on Cialis. Red Bull still, Cialis. Okay, it's cold, dude. You are the guy that they say, if you have a four-hour erection, you need to get medical attention. That's you. No. No, you're not. No, you like that, a cold turtle? Yeah. I feel it's you. Terrible. I feel you because there ain't nothing worse than putting on five now, or six you, layers. You get 60 years old, stuff starts going the wrong and, way. And your stomach sticks out, and I'm like, I can't see what I'm working with, boys. I'm just guessing at that point. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Paul, listen, seriously, I have enjoyed this conversation as much as any conversation I've had, and you've dropped plenty of knowledge, and I want to thank you personally for taking the time out of your life. I enjoyed it. To come up here. And it wasn't as bad as you thought it was, was it? Well, it's not. Anyway, so you can come back sometime, right? I can. Perfect. So, all right, guys, that's the end of the live well tonight. We appreciate every one of you guys. Yeah, cold turtle, Philip Hutchinson. <laughs> Robert Woody. <laughs> Just wow. Listen, you never know what rabbit hole we will go down here. Again, if your kids are watching, this show ain't for you. So, all right. Hey, well, sorry about that. We apologize in advance. But, guys, listen, seriously, we appreciate you guys watching. And uh, next week, Again, I got Kaz Anderson and Jordan Lee, two-time Bassmaster Classic, is going to be on. Jordan will be piping him in from Alabama. He won't drive all the way out here, but Kaz will be here. We want you guys to enjoy us, uh, enjoy the show next week. Join us. And, again, if you're fishing this weekend, please be safe. We want to make sure you get home and can enjoy the lake at a later date. So we appreciate you guys. We love you. We'll see you next week.